So an EGFR mutation is epidermal growth factor receptor mutation. Some patients have this mutation, and it means that they might be a candidate for the therapy called erlotinib. That's another word for targeted therapy. Targeted therapy is the way that we treat patients who have novel genetic alterations, fusions, and mutations. Patients who have unique genetic identifiers might be candidates for genetic therapy, or candidates for vaccine therapy, or candidates for targeted therapy. Patients who get targeted therapy might have a profile of their genetic mutations within the tumor. It's always important, if you're told that you're a candidate for targeted therapy, that you ask your doctor, perhaps you should test me for other drugs. Perhaps you should test me for other mutations, fusions, or alterations. Anytime a patient gets traditional chemotherapy, it's usually cisplatin plus another drug. That's the traditional way that we treat lung cancer. Patients who don't respond to the first-line therapy sometimes are considered for what's called second-line therapy, and often targeted therapy is considered at that point. There are other patients who aren't in good enough shape to have this cisplatin doublet or targeted therapy, and in that circumstance, those patients are offered the targeted therapy up front. And it sometimes is a little bit more expensive than the traditional therapy, but sometimes can have a dramatic response. Some patients can have metastatic tumors that are all held at bay. Other patients can have tumors that are shrunken by the targeted therapy. And the good thing about targeted therapy is it doesn't tend to make you as sick as chemotherapy does. It's what I call the kinder, gentler version of chemotherapy. It's a lot easier to tolerate, and it often isn't administered IV. And so patients are often very attracted to targeted therapy as an alternative option. And as surgeons and oncologists and different types of people who treat patients with lung cancer, it's always important to consider all the options. That was a better answer, too. So yeah, that was, I get better every time. Okay, three more. Uh, three more. So why do non-smokers get lung cancer? So my patients who have never smoked often ask me, how did I get lung cancer? And what I say to those patients is, Sometimes you were exposed to secondhand smoke and you didn't know it, or you knew it. Sometimes you have genetic mutations that you inherited from your family that made you predisposed to develop lung cancer. Sometimes you lived in an area that exposed you to something like radon gas that increased your chances of developing a lung cancer. And some even more unfortunate people may have been exposed to all of those things, that the combination of those things led to lung cancer. And of course, there are other things that we haven't even discovered yet that might lead to the diagnosis of lung cancer. So we know that the majority of patients that get lung cancer have at some point been exposed to tobacco smoking. Either they smoked or they were exposed to the smoking. Secondhand smoke is definitely a huge risk. So there are a lot of different ways that people can get lung cancer, and it doesn't mean that they always smoked.